Hey, it's Melody. Welcome to A Saner Spin on Crazy, episode 5. This week I'm answering a reader's question um, that is representative of a question I get a lot. This reader happens to be a PhD student who attempted suicide, was in the hospital for three months, and now thankfully is feeling better and is on her way to recovery, uh, but asked me, among other things, specifically, uh, what advice do you have for someone like me who's just starting to make her way out on the outside about to face questions from her classmates and professors about where she disappeared to for an entire semester. Yeah, I mean, those kinds of questions, there's a lot of different versions of them when you're going to the hospital or when you're coming out, just what to tell people. For one, for the most part, you don't owe anyone an explanation. Uh, if you feel uncomfortable talking about it, it's fine to say, I feel uncomfortable talking about this. I'd rather not talk about it. Um, if all you can say is, you know, I, I was feeling ill, I was in the hospital, I'm feeling better, thanks for your concern, that's fine. If you feel pressured to give a diagnosis, you can say, I have a neurological condition, um, which is true. Mental illnesses are neurological conditions, but neurological condition, that phrase, doesn't carry the same stigma. Um, but what I'm saying is, before you lie, consider this. Consider that the lie that may fix a lot of things in the short run, it may solve a lot of problems, and that's why people do it, you know, but uh, it may fix those things in the short run, it may cause a lot more problems, and a lot worse problems in the long run, and the worst of those being uh, reinforcing shame, internalized shame, uh, and that keeps us sick more than anything else, I think, is the shame that society puts on us. We, there, I don't feel ashamed for a second of the time that I spent in the hospital, um, for my pancreatic tumor. And in the same way, I don't feel ashamed for a second of the time that I spent in psychiatric facilities. I met some of my best friends there. I learned a lot of great lessons. I had revolution incited me by the, in me, by the horrors that I witnessed in some of these places. That's something I'm grateful for. But I will say that at the beginning, I was not uh, I didn't feel this way. I was definitely ashamed, and I think it's very common. And that's not me, and that's not you if you're dealing with this. What it is is society putting this on us. Um, and if anybody should be ashamed, it's the rest of society that's telling us that we should be embarrassed of something that we have no reason to be embarrassed of uh, any more than we have a reason to be embarrassed of any pancreatic tumor that we used to have. Um, so that said, consider what will happen when you lie. Uh, and what that can do to you and to your recovery. Also consider the fact that people end up finding out anyway. Um, I was talking to my mom the other day, and she was talking about somebody in our community, distant, we don't, we're not close to them at all, we don't know them that well, but she happened to be saying, well, you know, I feel really bad for these people, they're dealing with this such and such problem. Um, mental health related, substance abuse related. And it's funny because she said, she, she said, don't, nobody knows about this. But how do you know about it? She barely knows these people and she knows about it. That's what ends up happening. It's the people who barely know you who end up saying, oh, I feel so bad about this, but I'm not going to say anything because nobody knows anything and I'm not going to visit them and um, actually, you know, try and help them because it's not like my mom was saying horrible things about this person. She was saying, I feel bad. Um, but she's not supposed to know about it. So she can't try and help in any way. All she can do is say, what do you think? You know, maybe I can tell their parents something. I, 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 I think what ends up happening is these lies end up hurting not just ourselves, but they end up reinforcing stigma in society in general. Um, and all this secrecy just keeps us sick more than anything. Um, it's also important to note that in order to get legal protections under the Americans with Disabilities Act, um, Mental illnesses are disabilities. Four of the top ten leading causes of disability in the world are mental illnesses, according to the World Health Organization. That's the world. It's not a first world issue. It's not an American issue. Um, it's Depression is the leading cause of disability. If not now, it will be very soon uh, around the world. So these are obviously legitimate disabilities that cost us in the U.S. a lot of money and a lot of grief. Uh, but a lot of us don't see them as such and don't realize that we have... Uh, rights because of we are living with disabilities, that we are actually entitled to accommodations under the ADA, but we are. Uh, but you will not get those accommodations and you are not entitled to anything if your employer or your university is unaware of the fact that you have a disability. Part of that is, part of that law is that your employer or your university has to be aware of the disability in order for it to essentially kick in um, and for you to be uh, granted those accommodations uh, 
and that's actually what happened to me in law school. I was, I used the Office of Disability Services at Emory, which is amazing, uh, and was able to get a lot of help that I needed and accommodations I needed that helped made it possible for me to graduate. Um, so that said, lies can create bad stuff in the end is the conclusion of this episode. But I will be back next week. And until then, have a great week. Bye.